friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to the tutorial on ISTQB Advanced Test Analyst. We are in chapter 5 and looking at the next topic is 5.2 using checklist interview. So uh, making use of checklist is a very common thing to understand from the formal review process which we understood in the foundation level where checklist was introduced in terms of understanding how the checklist based review can be conducted. And here we are talking in more detail about how a checklist can be used and what the different checklists are which a test analyst must know before implementing such activities as a part of your organization process. So generally a checklist uh, consists of a typical set of questions about the product at different level and uh, it is generally created at the organization level. That means uh, it will be standard for an entire organization to be checked at any point of time. So say probably you're testing uh, unit testing and you want to have, uh, sorry, we're talking about reviews. So you are having certain documentation with you like list of requirements and you want to review them. Then of course you will be having a standard checklist which determines certain questions like if this requirement is complete or this requirement has this particular path defined or this particular alternative defined or what this feature is all about, what's the positive data, what is the negative data. So you, you can generally create your own set of checklists which can be used during the reviews to uh, make sure that it is more successful and it enhances quality of the product before it is being further used. Now it's not only limited to reviews, what else the checklist may help you to uh, enhance within the process is like programmer or architecture skill set or a tester skill set as well. That is in terms of like what kind of criteria, what qualities do you expect a developer or an architect or tester to have. It's just like having a job criteria when you apply for a job, having a list of all the JD details, well, what you call it as a checklist. A certain risk level can also be assisted with help of checklist by identifying certain risk areas which are common whenever you do similar type of projects or uh, product generally. A specific test technique can now be allowed to you know, focus on information needed for a particular technique, like what kind of information should be detailed. Uh, generally, when you try about applying formal techniques, you need specifications to be clearly identified and detailed. A particular specification item, such as requirement, use case, or user story, all these things uh, uh, could help test, test analysts to understand in more detail that what exactly would be the requirement information and how do you identify them so you can have several types of checklists which can be used for different types of documentation further let's understand what's a checklist of a requirement review would look like so here we are talking about items so uh, as an example to what a requirement oriented checklist could include source of a requirement like from a person or a department testability of each requirement whether it is testable or not Acceptance criteria is well determined. Availability of the use case calling structure if applicable for any function. Unique identification of each requirement. Versioning of each requirement or of course user story or use case. Traceability for each requirement from business or marketing requirements. That means you must have a connectivity between them. Traceability between the requirements or use cases. Use of consistent terminology. That means uh, being having a standard terminology would help easily to identify certain things as a part of your checklist. So generally it goes at the organization level and you use certain standards for even that. The next one is user story review. It's just quite like, you know, uh, requirement review is what we call it as user story review in Agile. So in practices in Agile, we call requirements as user stories and user stories are basically the smallest unit which can be processed at a time and you generally uh, call this as user story and each one is being numbered or sequenced along. Uh, here the checklist of user story would include a typical example of like is the story appropriate for the target iteration or not? Is the story written from the view of person who is requesting it? Are the acceptance criteria defined and testable? Is the feature clearly defined and distinct? Is the story independent of any others? If you have any kind of relations, you must build up that relation or make it independent. Is the story prioritized? Of course, that would be part of it. Does the story follow the commonly used format like as a user, I want this goal to be achieved so that this is what my output is. So we have generally certain standards which are used in preparing the use story 
or if you're using your internal standards, make sure that you fulfill that uh, requirement as a part of user story review. At the end, we are talking about tailoring checklist, that how exactly your checklist can be tailored if you're looking into your organization to create one, or what if you are the first person to initiate the preparation of checklist and utilizing the same. So this point can help you to determine what kind of factors can be considered when preparing checklists. So of course, first is organization, understanding the organization standards, policies, conventions, etc., which will help you to determine your format for the checklist. Project and development effort, what kind of inputs are required, like in terms of like focus, technical standards, risk, and so on. Work product being reviewed, what kind of document is being reviewed, of course, will help you to determine. Risk level of the work product being reviewed, generally it is at high or low, based on that you can determine the details required for the checklist and test technique to be used. If you are using one, you can identify that as well. So that is what is tailoring the checklist is all about. Good checklist will find always problems and will also help to start discussing regarding other items that might not have been specifically referenced in the checklist. Using a combination of checklist is a strong way to ensure a review achieves the highest quality work product. So of course, at the end of the day, checklist generally helps you to determine a product which you generally want to uh, use and uh, make sure that it gives a lot of value added to the uh, system and of course the work product. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have any query, feel free to comment below. I'll be there to address the same. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring and keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.